Last year I was um, shooting my a movie, Where to Invade Next, and we went to this country, um, Estonia. I wanted to go there because I was trying to show in different countries what they do better than us and what can we learn from them. And so I went to Estonia because there, but the World Health Organization says that you have the least chance as a woman dying in childbirth in Estonia than any other country on the planet. If you live in Cleveland, you have a three times greater chance of dying in childbirth than you do in, Cle than you do in Estonia. And so they took me to the maternity ward, and they had the head doctor of the, the maternity ward. And uh, he's showing me around, and he's telling me why they're so good at this. We're walking down this hallway, and there's a picture on the wall. And I stopped him, and I said, wait a minute, I know the person in that photo. <laughs> That's me and the doctor there in the hallway. And can we just punch in, punch in a little bit on this uh, here? It's Hillary Clinton shaking this guy's hand. I said, where, was it, where did this happen? He said, it happened right to where you're standing. <laughs> I said, oh my god, well, who's the guy? That is me, 20 years ago. I said, oh my god. So, okay, well, so what was she doing in Estonia? Well, don't you remember? She wanted you to have universal health care. So she was studying. She went around the world to study it. And she came to little Estonia for the same reason you're here tonight, to find out why so many more women survive childbirth here than in the United States. And I said, oh my god, wow, she came here? Yes. And then she went back, and you didn't listen to her. Instead, you humiliated her and attacked her. And you've gone 20 years now without universal health care. And we've had it. I said, um, I made this movie, Sicko. And while making the movie, I learned that, according to the Congressional Budget Office, nearly 50,000 Americans die each year for one simple reason. They don't have health insurance, or they don't have adequate health insurance. In other words, not because of the disease, not because of the germs in the hospital, but because they didn't have health insurance, they put off going to the doctor, or they had crappy health insurance, and the doctor couldn't send them to the specialist that he wanted to send them to. So they died. They died only because they were Americans. If they lived across the river from Detroit, in Windsor, Canada, they'd be alive. But because they were American, they died. 50,000 a year. And I sat there and I started doing the math of this. Like 50, 20 years, 50,000 people dead. Holy shit, this is like a million people. That's a million of our fellow Americans dead because they didn't have health insurance. <laughs> if they'd been Canadian or French or Scottish or Chilean or just about anywhere else in the world, they would have lived every 9-11. We have somber vigils and memorials for the 3,000 Americans who died in that attack, as we should. 3,000. I still tear up over it. One of my producers was on the plane from Boston that went in the North, North Tower. We shed no tears for the million Americans who have died from that act of terrorism. One million dead Americans because we refused to listen to Hillary Clinton. Who are we? And what is terrorism? We don't think for one second about the one million dead Americans killed by a system run by greed. Greed of the insurance company. One million dead. One million dead. It's wrong. It's just wrong. One million of our fellow Americans. Where are the tears for them? Where are their names on the marble wall? I saw some of you standing. I know why the response to that, because we all know somebody, don't we? We all have a family member, a neighbor, somebody we went to school with, somebody at work, somebody down the street, somebody we heard about. They put off going to the doctor. 
Or they went, but they didn't have enough health insurance. And even with Obamacare, we still have almost 30 million with no health insurance. These are our fellow Americans. And yet Hillary was attacked. She was humiliated. You remember this when this happened? There were people in Congress were like, get rid of her. She's not the president. Nobody elected you. And it went down to defeat. And it never got brought up again, did it? Until Obama started bringing it up. Never got brought up again. And they forced her to change into someone else. She was told to shut up. And she started baking the cookies and hosting the teas. I don't know. Something's wrong here. In a way, we have a chance to redeem ourselves, don't we, for this. It's possible. I don't know. You know, when you've got the Pope saying that what you're doing is a sin, <laughs> that it's a sin not to help someone when they're sick, and not have them worry about how much it costs them, because in the Bible it says, right? I mean, Jesus laid it out. I mean, I know you're not here for a religion lesson, but if you believe in that, he lays it out pretty clearly, right? But this new pope, he gets it. What's the deal with him? <laughs> Whoa! Right? I mean, he's, <laughs> he's like, he's like, I got a theory about him too, because you know he was in Buenos Aires, right? during the time of the junta, during the time of the generals, right? When all those people were killed, he was the guy. He was the guy for the Catholic Church there. What'd he do? What'd he say? I don't remember anything. I remember on the day he was elected pope, I remember thinking, oh, this is not good. And then within a month, he's like, okay, um, atheists go to heaven. <laughs> atheists go to heaven? Uh, he said if he could personally apologize to every gay and lesbian for the harm caused to them by the Catholic Church. He would like to do that. Wow. Then he said capitalism is a sin. Whoa! Whoa! Oh! When he, when he said that, I thought, oh my God. I actually, I don't know if you remember this, I volunteered publicly to be his soup taste tester, you know? like. <laughs> They're going to kill this guy for sure now. He said, when you die, your pets will be in heaven there to greet you. Oh. Oh. No, this guy, right? How did he get the job? He must have kept quiet all those years. But he's thinking. He's planning. He gets all these other cardinals to think he's some conservative asshole from South, South American dictatorship. Then they vote him in, and they're like, whoa! <laughs> they don't know what to do. But he bided his time. He bided his time. And I've had this crazy feeling lately, and, and I know I'm sorry to lay too much optimism on you here tonight. What if, what if Hillary, what if Hillary becomes our Pope Francis? What if she has her Pope Frank moment? What if all this time, right? This has been part of her long game. Like, she's had this ambition since she was a teenager. When she was in college, she, she gave the graduation speech. If you read her speech, it reads like Bernie wrote it. This is actually her voice at the age of 22 giving her graduation speech. Listen to this. The struggle for an integrated life existing in an atmosphere of communal trust and respect is one with desperately important political and social consequences. And the word consequences, of course, catapults us into the future. One of the most tragic things that happened yesterday, a beautiful day, was that I was talking to a woman who said she wouldn't want to be me for anything in the world. She wouldn't want to live today and look ahead to what it is she sees because she's afraid. Fear is always with us, but we just don't have time for it. Not now. Fear. It's like the women of Hillary's generation were the first feminists of the modern era. 
They were raised by women. Their mothers and grandmothers had to go to work during World War II because the men were gone. It was the first time women were able to leave the house and have a job, and they worked in the factories, they worked the office, they ran the country. They did all the work. And then after the war, the men came home, and they told the women to go back to the kitchen. And they did, most of them. But they didn't, they didn't leave or forget what it was like to have that freedom, to earn their own money. The women of that World War II generation raised that next generation. That's Hillary's generation. There's women in here tonight of that generation, of my generation even. You know what it was like back then. Younger people in here, i got to tell you something. It was not pleasant to stand up for what you believed in. It was not easy to say, I want it to be this way. The harassment that they suffered, the abuse that they took at work, at school, if they decided to stand up, they were sure to be alone. Other than a few other women, young girls that were with them, Hillary went through this whole thing. She went through the same thing. I'm seeing some women nod their heads. You know what I'm talking about. You know, getting pinched on the ass every day was a common occurrence. You could say all kinds of shit to women. You could threaten them. There was no such thing as battered spousal abuse, whatever. There was not a word for it. And the shit that Hillary took as a young woman, marrying Bill Clinton, going to Arkansas, she decided to, to, she was going to have her own job. She was going to work for the Legal Aid Society, helping poor people with free legal help. And people in Arkansas are like, what's this? He lost his election, according to the pundits in Arkansas, because she refused to change her last name to his. She was known as Hillary Rodham. And all the papers, everybody said, well, you know, it's, 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 this is Arkansas. And so to help him out in the next election, she changed her name to Hillary Rodham Clinton. And to help him out further on, she dropped the Rodham. She is willing to subjugate and submerge herself to help him do this and to take the shit for it. I have a theory about this. I don't think she's forgotten one bit of this. I don't think she's forgotten one single inch of this abuse from the time she was in high school all the way up until 10 o'clock this morning. I think it's all there. And I think that she's been biding her time. My hope, my optimism for this, Hillary, if you're watching this uh, right now, I, I, I have a feeling somebody's going to slip you a tape uh, of this. I just want to tell you something. I know you've been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting, but you're not alone. A whole bunch of the rest of us have been waiting for that glorious moment when the other gender, the majority gender, has a chance to run this world, to have real power, and kick some righteous ass. And we are counting on you to do this. Right?